Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing my very first ever reset vlog. Also, I apologize for my slightly squeakier voice. I was just getting over a cold and I feel totally fine now, but my voice is kind of stuck like this for the next couple of days, so. So today's video is going to be something that I've actually never done before, or I did do something like this once. I did this last summer, but it's called a reset vlog. And if you're unfamiliar, basically you're just resetting everything for the next month so that you can be really, really focused and prepared for everything that's coming up. I love this type of content. I feel like Liv from Olivia Reads a Latte does this so well because she does such a great job at incorporating books along with her reset routine. I think this was originally a concept that was created by Carter Sullivan. I will link her and Liv down below, as well as another content creator I love named Selena. I love her reset vlogs so much. So basically, this reset vlog is gonna have several parts. The first part is going to be me going over all of the goals that I want to accomplish in the next upcoming month. The next section is going to be all of the things that I have to do for the month. So I'm going to be prepping and planning all of my content for my channel. I'm gonna be prepping and planning all of my content for Patreon. This is a really, really big and important month for me because I actually have an exclusive readathon happening this entire month. And I wanna make sure that I'm being really, really present. And I'm also remembering to vlog for this readathon as well. The next section will be things that get me excited for the month. So when I have time, I actually love to sit down and and create digital mood boards so that I can kind of focus on what I want to happen for the next month and just try to be a little bit more positive. I don't actually know what I want on my mood board, but I definitely feel like I want to create a digital mood board. Sometimes I also put these on my phone or like on my desktop just so that I can like focus on things that I really, really want to accomplish and like feelings that I wanna feel throughout the month. It sounds kind of funny, but like for example, it's such beautiful weather that I wanna make sure that I go out and I enjoy like, I don't know, hanging out with friends more this month or maybe like doing a picnic or hanging out more with my family. And so I'll find pictures that remind me of like going on picnics or enjoying the outside and I'll incorporate it in my mood board so that I can look down and remember like, oh, this is really important to me. I need to make time for this this month. I don't, I hope that makes sense, yeah. And then I'm also probably going to make a playlist. I love making playlists of songs that I'm like really excited about and that I can't stop listening to and then listening to it throughout the entire month. So I kind of want to do that for May as well. Next up, we're going to be doing a deep clean of my house because I just got back from New York City. I had this incredible vacation with my bookish friends. I sort of feel like it's hard for me to get back into the swing of things. I feel like my house is actually kind of messy. I feel like I don't know what I'm going to be eating for the week. I don't have like any food or groceries currently in my refrigerator. And so a big portion of today is going to be like meal prepping and planning, going grocery shopping, but then also cleaning. And then finally, we'll kind of end out the vlog with some monthly favorites, which I'm very, very excited to share with you as well. But yeah, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and start with trying to figure out what things I want to accomplish this month with our monthly goals. are officially in my office. I went ahead and I actually wrote out all of my goals. My very favorite place to journal is actually on my porch, but it is so windy today that there was no way that I was gonna talk through this outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk through some of my goals now, and I just put them in my journal. So my very first goal is to try saving 20% of my income, because what I'd like to do is I'd like to save 10% for like emergencies, and then I want 10% to go into a travel fund. Recently, I'll be talking about this a lot, so like apologies in advance, but recently I went on a trip with my friends to New York, and it has fully opened my eyes 
to the fact that I just love traveling. And so now I definitely want to make traveling way more of a priority because New York was just so much fun. And I don't want that to be like a once in a lifetime experience. I want to make time and save up money so that I can travel and see my friends like throughout the year. My second goal is I wanna cook more at home. Actually, I just deleted my DoorDash app. I find that I waste so much money when I do DoorDash. Everything is just so much more expensive when you are eating out. But also, I just really feel like my best self when I'm eating out either. I feel like when I eat Taco Bell like once in a while, it's totally fine and it's like comfort. It's it's fun to have a Crunchwrap Supreme. But after like three days of just eating fast food, I just feel so much more tired and so much more lethargic and just not myself. And so a huge goal for this month is I want to be really intentional with eating at my house and like cooking my own meals. But also when I do go out, I want to go out and actually like enjoy the restaurant. My second goal, this is so boring, but my second goal is I really want to organize my hall closets. I have reorganized my entire office, which is where I'm at now. And I just feel so much nicer and like more peaceful knowing that everything has like a place and it's not chaotic anymore. My closets, like the two closets that are in my two halls are a disaster. I haven't had like a way to organize any of my stuff. And so I wanna be really intentional and like measure stuff and try to figure out like what I wanna store, do I wanna donate any of my coats, things like that. So I really wanna reorganize both of those closets. I just feel like I'll feel more productive and like happier knowing that they're like things have a place, you know what I mean? My fourth goal is to create a morning routine. I did this challenge where I wake up at five in the morning. I feel like five in the morning is pretty early for me. So I don't know if I wanna try to commit to that for 30 days, but I felt so much better that entire week that I was waking up at five in the morning. I I felt like I was really taking time for myself. I just felt way less stressed and anxious throughout the day when I was doing that. And I'd really, really like to try to come up with a routine where maybe I'm working out a little bit, maybe I'm taking some time for myself to either journal or to read, to enjoy my coffee, and to kind of reclaim my morning. Okay, goal number five is a really big one, and that is I want to schedule in writing. Those of you who have like followed me for a while know that my number one goal in life has always been to become a writer. That's why I went to school, that's my undergrad degree, it's in creative writing and English literature. I used to write all the time for fun, but I never ever make time for that and I never make time to be creative and just to write. And so one of my biggest goals this summer, but specifically in May, is to try to pencil in at least like three times a week where I'm sitting down and I'm writing for an hour. Goal number six is to focus on my readathon. I'm doing an exclusive Patreon readathon this month. Do seasonal readathons with like illustrated maps and templates and all this stuff four times a year. And I really, really, really wanted to vlog like a dedicated vlog and to make more content for my last two because I was so proud of them. The first time all of my footage became corrupt and then the second time I just ran out of time because I was moving. I really, really, really want to make an effort to focus on creating content for my readathon and being really present with all of my Patreons for the readathon for the entirety of the month. Number seven is to get back into running. So when I was in high school, I did a lot of sports. I was dance team captain and I played tennis and I loved tennis. I always did cross country and I actually used to love running. And everyone in my family runs, but I have not run for like a long time but I miss it. There was like a feeling where you, I just never thought about any of the stuff that made me anxious. Like my mind would go blank when I would run and I would just be so in the moment and so enthralled with like my playlist and where I was running. And it's just like a great way for me to really be present and in the moment. But I only feel like that when I'm in shape to run. So like right now, if I were to run, I would just be thinking, when do I get to stop? <laughs> Number eight is to spend more time with my family and my friends. Again, the trip to New York just like really opened my eyes. I love my job with my whole heart. Like I don't really wanna do anything else. I love YouTube and I love Patreon, but a lot of the times I will not hang out with my friends or my family because I have things to do. And so I really wanna focus on maybe creating like a block schedule or something so that I can pencil in more time to hang out with my mom and my dad and with my friends 
because I really miss that. And spending time with my friends in New York really just made me realize like it's so important to make time for your friends. Number nine, I really want to journal four times a week. I have kept a journal since I was nine years old. I have like so many journals throughout my life, but I have recently stopped journaling. Like this is my journal for the year. I feel like it's not very filled up. And I just feel like journaling is a great way for me to feel really like centered, but it's also a great way for me to romanticize my life. And then number 10 is a, a personal one. I mean, they're all personal, but it's, I wanna post more on Instagram, but also I wanna have more fun with Instagram because I feel like for a while, I was putting way too much pressure on myself. I was only taking pictures with my DSLR camera. I would like go through all of these layouts for books and things. I kind of wanna reclaim my Instagram. I wanna post pictures with my phone, I want to post like silly pictures and photo dumps and I just don't want to take it as seriously and I want to have more fun with my Instagram. Like I just want to enjoy having my Instagram and posting pictures that make me happy rather than picking things that I think will do well like in the algorithm. You know what I mean? Okay, so those are my 10 goals for the month. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and done my goals, I'm actually gonna focus on the content that I wanna do for this month. And I also really, really like having a roadmap for Patreon. So my Patreon, I really, really try to make sure that all of my Patreons feel like they're getting their money's worth. So every single week I do posts where I'm sharing like behind the scenes content or I'm creating graphics for them, I'm creating playlists, mood boards, I have like exclusive video content for them, I have exclusive like readathons, and it's every single day of the week I try to do something small. I also try to include like live shows every single week as well. So it's really important for me that I have like a clear focus of everything that I want to post in Patreon so that like if I know that I want to make a graphic, I give myself enough time to create the graphic. And I just use Canva for most things or Procreate. So they're like small. It's how I share like book recommendation lists and things like that. Right now, I'm probably going to be brainstorming all of the content, figuring out what I'm going to be posting on my channel, figuring out maybe what I want to post on my Instagram, and then also figuring out what I want to post on Patreon. So it's going to be a little bit more of like a brainstorming session now. Let's go ahead and plan all of our content for the month. gone ahead and done all of the brainstorming and planning for the month. And I kind of just like wanted to walk you through how I do it in case you're interested. I like to do a lot of research and try to figure out like what content have I been really enjoying and what content do I think that I could do like a decent job at or what content am I excited for? And I usually brainstorm a lot of ideas, like way more ideas than I'm actually going to do. And I do this like every single month. Also, if you hear scratching, that's my cat. She's very excited about her cat tower. Once I brainstorm everything, I kind of go through and I pick out the ideas that I think I'm most excited to do. And then what I do is I have a big calendar and I put everything on post-it sticky notes. I do this because sometimes I'll move around dates or videos if like certain videos get done before others and I need content. 
Also, as you can see, like I'm trying to do a lot of different ideas. Like I'm trying to do a lot of vlogs this month and a lot of videos, but I do like weekly live shows with my Patreons. I have Patreon exclusive content and stuff too. And so I don't always have time to do every single idea that I want to do. And so the sticky notes just help me to feel like if I can't do something one month, I can take the sticky note and like put it on the next month. So once everything is on the sticky notes and I kind of have a plan, then I actually transfer it over to my computer and I have like little charts. And this way I can kind of keep up with like what videos need to be edited and by when, when things are due. And it just kind of helps me to feel like I am organized with my content because there's so much content as far as like vlogging content where if it's for a specific concept, I have to be vlogging a certain amount every single week and reading a certain amount every single week but I also have to keep in mind that I'm doing stuff for my Patreon and maybe I'm doing stuff for like my main sit down videos that I have to research for. So it's a lot of reading and I have to keep up with like all of the stuff per video or I don't get my vlogs out on time. But that is that for all of the content planning and stuff. I don't know if that's boring, but that's how I do that for the month. And now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of get excited for the month. I don't do this every month. I actually usually do this seasonally, where I do like a seasonal mood board, a seasonal playlist and things, but I kind of feel like doing it now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create like a digital mood board, and I think I'm also gonna put together a new playlist as well. So I will catch up with you as soon as these things are done. Hello friends. Okay, so I have officially finished my like new desktop mood board. I think it turned out super, super cute. I'll insert a picture so that you can see what it looks like. I just use Canva. I use Canva for almost everything, honestly. I just feel like it's such a fun way to like, I don't know, get creative. And I just use Pinterest too. Like, I don't own any of these. I got all of these from Pinterest. I tried to incorporate like pictures of friends together and just like very happy vibes. I also have a tattoo on here because I don't know if I want to do it in May, but definitely this summer, I really, really want to get a tattoo. So I decided to put it on my Pinterest board just so that I can kind of like have it fresh in my mind. And I'm still currently in the process of like putting together things for my playlist. So okay, it's currently 446. So it's gonna be five o'clock soon. I've already filmed the outro of this with my monthly favorites. What I think I'm gonna do now though is I'm probably gonna go grocery shopping and then the next few clips will probably be of the next day because part of this reset vlog is a deep clean, which I really, really wanna do, but that's gonna take several hours. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is go grocery shopping now and then tomorrow I'll film like meal prep and also like a deep clean and I'll just insert that here. But yeah, I'm so excited because I also kind of came up with my menu. So the next few clips will be grocery shopping, meal prep, and cleaning, probably from the next day. But without further ado, uh, let's get on with the next portion of the reset vlog and go grocery shopping and do a nice deep clean.
it is now officially time to do the monthly favorites, which I'm so excited about. I actually love old school YouTube where people would sit down and like show you what was in their purse or like their spring favorites, their summer favorites. There's something about that that just, it makes me feel like super comforted and it feels like you're just chatting with one of your friends. Here are some of my favorites. I actually have a whole basket, so I'll try to be kind of brief. So first of all, my very favorite thing from last month was the trip that I took with my two friends, Sabine and Britt. I will link both of their channels below. We decided to go to New York together and we've been planning this trip for a really, really long time. And it was honestly just like such a dream come true. If I could go back and relive those five days or six days, I honestly would because they made me so incredibly happy. And it was really, really hard to end the vacation because I honestly just wanted to keep reliving every single day. We had so many incredible memories and things that we did. I do have a vlog that I think is gonna come, but I feel like I didn't do a very good job vlogging it because I was just so in the moment. I think my very favorite day of the entire month was a day that the three of us went to a restaurant called Tavern on the Green, and then we went to Central Park, and we just kind of like laid around and chatted with each other, and it was honestly just, it the whole day felt like a movie, and it made me so happy, and it makes me so happy to think about. So that's definitely my favorite memory of the entire month. This is so random, but I have a shoe favorite, and that shoe favorite is from a company called Sam Edelman I think in New York um, so these are not the shoes that I took to New York City I took a pair of white shoes that I bought from this company and they are the world's most comfortable walking shoes ever I feel like I didn't even necessarily need to break them in or anything so if you are going on a vacation where you need to walk a lot I highly recommend checking out the company I bought two pairs this is the other pair that I purchased I didn't take them to New York but I really, really like this pair a lot as well. I just feel like they look really, really clean, um, but they also look kind of cool with like the black and everything. I'm just like a really, really, really huge fan now of this company because his shoes are so incredibly soft. Like they're just very, very cushioned. So if you are in the market, for some new shoes. I highly recommend checking out this company. Next up, let's talk food favorites. So if you know anything about me, you know that I have a really big sweet tooth and that I love to bake. And I have been obsessed for the past, I don't know, three months with this company. Uh, they're called Sweet Lorenz, I think. I don't think it's Lauren, I think it's Loren. They have like all this stuff on the front that makes you feel like it's like a healthier cookie. It's plant-based, it's gluten-free, it's dairy-free. There's no peanut or tree things in here at all. They taste so incredible, like they taste so good. This is one of the best cookies I've ever had. Here I have the chocolate chip, but actually my favorite are the sugar cookies. And I've been buying a pack of these and then eating them probably every other week for the past like several months. I'm just fully obsessed. Like if you love an easy take and bake cookie, I think you should check these out. Next up, I feel like I have been fully, fully converted. I am now an energy drink girly. I never used to be. Actually, this is one of my best friend's favorite energy drinks, Kaylin. And then I was talking to one of my other best friends, uh, Noelle. I asked her like what flavor she likes. And she said that her favorite was the peach. And there's no going back. Now this is my favorite thing ever. I buy this in bulk. This tastes like a fizzy peachy drink and it does give me just like that little kick of energy that I need to kind of like go throughout the day. I'm obsessed with this drink. I highly recommend trying out this Alani New Peach. It's just so good. Okay, now let's talk about a book favorite. This book is super divisive and actually it's hilarious because one of my best friends here on booktube, his name is Gavin. I'll link his channel down below. We read this for Gabby's book club. I wanna say like it was at the end of March, but I'm including it in April. He actually hated this book and he has like such funny thoughts on this book. I love hearing him rant about this because even though it's one of my favorites, he's just so funny in how he like discusses how much he hates it. So this is a very, very divisive book for sure. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but I actually really, really, really liked it and it's How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Grady Hendrix is just like my favorite horror writer at this time, I think. 
I love his commentary. Like he does such a great job at including social commentary with his horror. And he does such a great job at including real life horrors and incorporating it into more campy fun versions of horror that are still terrifying. So I'm obsessed with this book. We're exploring sibling dynamics. Specifically, we're exploring the relationship between Louise and Mark. Their parents have just passed away and they have to sell their parents' house. There's a lot of like tension between them and the house turns out to be haunted and also plagued with tons and tons of dolls and creepy puppets. And it was just a wild, really, really great time. Definitely a favorite book that I've read in a long time. And I, I honestly highly recommend it. Like I love it so much. Okay, and then my other ones I'll be like super, super brief on. Every spring, I rediscover my love for this perfume. It's by Derek Lamb. I think this is what it looks like. I only wear this in the springtime and it's called Through the Looking Glass, I believe. So we've got like a little bit of an Alice in Wonderland moment, but it just smells so fresh and like clean. I know you're not supposed to rub right away, but it's a habit. It just reminds me a little bit of like a garden. It feels very light and floral and very, I don't know, soft. It makes me really, really happy and I always reach for it around this time of year. I've become re-obsessed with this, um, but again, I only wear this around the springtime, so if you're looking for like a fun, really light spring scent, maybe check out Through the Looking Glass. Okay, next up, I am so obsessed with these. These are my favorite face masks. They're by Peter Thomas Roth. He has like a ton in this line. I think my actual favorite, it's like a blue package and it's the hyaluronic ones, but I really, really like these ones too. These are the hydrogel eye patches. You just wear them like right underneath your eyes. You can wear them two different ways. You can wear them so that they focus on the little lines that you get right here or your bags. I prefer using them so that they focus on like the bags under my eyes because I get really tired and I get really bad bags under my eyes. I keep this in the refrigerator and I just, it feels like such good self care in the morning to like put them on, to drink some coffee, to read a book. And I just, I don't know, I really, really enjoy these. So if you're looking for like a good eye mask that makes you feel like very awake and also I feel like does a great job at like really brightening up your under eye area. I highly recommend checking out any of his eye masks in this line. Next up, I have my very favorite face sunscreen. This is an expensive one. I'm just gonna do like a disclaimer, but I've had this bottle for over two years and I use it every single day. I think the thing is it's so thick that you only need like a very, very, very small amount for it to do its job. So in my personal opinion, it's worth the price tag, but it's the Tatcha Silken Pore Perfecting Sunscreen. It's really important to take care of your skin and to wear sunscreen every single day. But this particular one blurs your pores really, really, really well. When I wear it, it feels almost like it also does the job of a primer. Sometimes I won't even wear foundation. I'll just wear a little bit of concealer and this, and I feel like it does almost the same job as foundation like it doesn't look like foundation it looks white but I don't know like it I feel like it makes my skin look better and I love that it protects my skin as well from the sun so this is like an all-time favorite at this point but definitely like it's something that I've been reaching for a ton this last month and then my favorite like beauty product for the month um, I got this from Target randomly and I'm just like so obsessed it's the watermelon and mint mojito and this is from love and beauty I think think I'm getting that right. That's what it looks like. It like honestly smells incredible. It smells just like the name. I'm obsessed with this. I love this scent so much. And then my final overall favorite of the month is my office. I redid my office. I decided that I really, really wanted to become like an organized girly. That's one of the reasons why it's like on my top goals of the month because my office has now brought me so much joy because it's just so organized and I really, really want that to be my entire house. I got all of my storage stuff actually just from Target. I had so much fun like organizing everything and putting everything all together and I'm just obsessed with it. So I think overall my favorite thing is just my office now because I've organized it. And if I can remember, I will link down like the little cubes that I got again from Target because I highly recommend them. Like I feel like they were pretty affordable and also they do the job so well. So if you're looking for storage options, highly recommend those little cubby things from Target. I think that's it for my reset though, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun planning the month with you, sharing with you all of my favorites and stuff, and then also just getting excited for the month ahead. I am so energized 
energized and like rejuvenated after such a fun vacation with my friends. And I'm just so excited to really tackle May and to have like a really fun time with my Patreons and our readathon and our book clubs and everything like that. And I'm so excited to create more content. I would love to know from you guys, are there videos that you would like me to specifically make in the next upcoming couple of months, specifically for the summer? If there are, let me know. And I would also love to know from you, what is one favorite thing that you have discovered in the next, or I guess in the last month? It can be like a book, it can be a product, it can be a drink, it can be whatever you want. Please let me know down below. And if you've made it to this point of the video, please leave me a watermelon emoji because of this. <laughs> But I think that's it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes. Like it's something in the air at that time. Don't know why. Always dream of you when spring comes. It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time that you were.